So there was an article that was done recently by Dennis Dodd of CBS uh, who detailed the journey of JT Daniels, who played for USC, Georgia, West Virginia, finished up at Rice. But he's kind of like the, the greatest high school. They say some say greatest high school football player of all time. Oh, yeah. He was uh, a monster. Um, and they talk about him as he's kind of the transfer portal king because he was kind of doing it, you know, back when it was really, really new <sighs> I don't, and really early on. You guys are really over exaggerated this whole thing. <laughs> what do you, well, I mean, he's transferred to four different schools, you know. He's all right, he was a highly rated quarterback. I don't know about all, like, like best of all time. All I mean, time. He played up modern day where his own coach was Bryce Young, who came in after him. Said Bryce was the best that he's ever had through that you know, prestigious school. Oh, no, man. And then if you look at the track record, if you go from U- USC to Georgia, Georgia to West Virginia, West Virginia to Rice, I'm not sure that's the uh, a Portal King territory. Well, so, I mean, he's, he's one of the originals, one of the OGs of the transfer <sighs> dang, portal. Dang. Oh, who do you want, Brew McCoy? I mean, come uh, on. Golly. All right, so, but he did this article on JT Daniels, and JT's I don't know if that's greatest ever. Go. Well, I, I don't know that a lot of people are aware of what he's currently dealing with when it comes to concussion. So his career ended because he's suffered multiple concussions, uh, two of which he deemed severe. And he just detailed some of the symptoms that he still has. And he said, quote, I'm still not back to normal. I lost binocular disparity. Your eyes are constantly communicating with each other. You see one picture with the left and one picture with the right. Naturally, your brain is combining them. When you see double vision, they're not communicating with each other. It's one picture, one picture, and they don't merge. He said he kept playing in the first half of his ninth game with it. You're pretty much seeing two pictures of each wide receiver. Pick which one to throw to. And he said that when they ask him about his early days at USC, he doesn't really remember. Like his his memory is that bad, and it's he just he's dealing with that now. And and the hope is, yeah, hopefully I'll get through it. But just talking about the concussion issues, damn man, I don't know that a lot of people were aware that he was kind of going through all this. And he's trying to get into coaching, and he's you know working his way up from the bottom to get into that. And he details all the relationships he's built with all the different players and coaches. He estimated 700 plus that he was, that he'd worked with through his time in college football. Oh, that's by, by his own choice. The, the greater part of the article is more about the journey, not so much as his own issues that he's dealing with, with concussions, which are obviously is a sad part of it, but it just, it, it kind of brought to light more of where guys are in regards to, transferring and this is his perspective on it it's it's in the short-term perspective right and he's someone who you know is the case study for just because you transfer doesn't mean the grass is always greener i mean from his commitment to usc at that point afterwards it only went downhill for him uh, now he got the opportunity to play he got the opportunity to compete injuries played a role in that uh, which is unfortunate and, and now he's going to try to get into coaching and if you read the article, he talks about how he doesn't have any regrets about it, but he's also one person in this whole scheme where there might be some others that do have some regrets about leaving certain schools and, you know, not having the ability to earn a degree. He, he's earned his degree, and that's a good thing. But that's one of the things that the article points out is just looking at how from uh, long ago, let's say back to 1964, I think it was, up until two years ago, I guess three years ago now, it's 2024, but back to like 2021, you had to sit out a year. If you transferred, you had to sit out a year. And now, and, and part of the reason was because they wanted you to focus on getting your academics in order because not all those, all those credits carry with you when you go to the next institution. And again, the focus was on like getting your degree and playing sports, student, then athlete. Well, now with the transfer portal, there's not even like a student component outside of staying eligible. And that's the tough part for me is like we've got a lot of adults who are allowing this to happen. And I don't know 10, 20 years down the road what a lot of these young people are going to look back on and say, you know, did I get my degree or did I not? You know, are they going to accrue more debt because they didn't? Like we all assume because they transfer like, oh, there's some NIL money. It's not life changing NIL money. It's not life changing money. So for the select few, the less than 1%, you know, they might be getting paid. But the reality is, is it's not life changing for them. And so unless they get their degree, unless they find out what that next thing is, 
that they want to do outside of sports, like they're going to have a hard time transitioning out of that whenever that time comes. And, and he's one that doesn't have any regrets about it, and that's fine. And he might not now, but he could in the future. But it's it just it shows you where the college football landscape is right now, and it's a it's a crazy place to be, you know, for some of these guys and and everything and everywhere every which way they're being pulled and enticed. Man, I got real serious. Um, I was just admiring him being the best, greatest high school football player of all time. I'm with you. He did. Q wanted to get all deep with it. Um. Because, well, yeah. I mean, literally, they went to the same high school as Bryce Young. <laughs> his, his own coach was saying that. Yeah, you know, uh, Leinert went there, too. I'm with you. Um, hey, trust me. I, I told Matt when his coach said that. I was like, damn. <laughs> damn. <laughs> uh, you, know, you know what's interesting about the transfer portal, and, and, and more so to the point of, you know, these, these young men and even other athletes, but we'll keep it football and keep it young men and, and the whole idea of of chasing a, a dream. It's like before the transfer portal, if you looked at the percentage of athletes that came from college that transitioned into pros, um, it's a super, super small number. You have all these guys that are working to try to get to the pros and the the likelihood you they said what well, I, I think there was a you were more you're more likely to get struck by lightning or win the lottery than to to get drafted or play professional football and and to me i heard that coming out of coming out of high school and when i was going into college and I just remember my mother and father always telling me, like, listen, you're really good. Like, no doubt about it. You oh, you yeah. gotten all these awards. You're really good at playing this game. But cool. you you gotta understand that you, you gotta get educated and you you need to be focused in on what you're going to do, not only during you know, during your time in school, but if you're able to play it, you got to be focused in on what you're going to do after you're done as well. And, you know, that always stuck with me. It, it, it really did. And, and, and again, I always bring up my mom and my dad when referencing, you know, these types of conversations. But, you know, the the idea of and I thought about transferring. That's that's the crazy thing. I did think about transferring and I did take LBU, a visit. No pit. chance. No chance. I thought about it. Yeah, uh, after my freshman year, I thought about it because I didn't know if I would be Aaron Gatton out. I knew I, I knew there was just things working against me. I felt like, you know, Joe didn't really care for me for one reason or another. I don't know why, but I just felt like he didn't care for me. And I didn't know if I was welcome there. And and so I got in my feelings. You know, I had my little Doble or my Cuba Gooden Jr. moment and, and, and boys in the hood where he started swinging like, I'm tired of this ass. I'm tired of it. Did and you I really? Swing it. Oh, yeah. Broke down. Like, really? broke down. Oh, broke down. I fell on my knees. <laughs> I was crying so hard, dog. Like, I, I fell on my knees. Like, you know how you fall on your knees in defeat? And, and you're, like, looking at your hands, and you're like, why? <laughs> why am I here? You know, and all that stuff. And, but then, you know, the whole thing, the whole part of growing up and becoming the, the person that you're supposed to become is, you know, they say iron sharpens iron. I had people that, that were in my corner, like Brandon Short and other guys, you know, Courtney and those guys, uh, up, you know, my, my dogs, up, uh, you know. But but you also are, are shaped and, and molded by being in the fire. And what I think is happening now is – no one is comfortable being in the fire. They're not feeling that heat. They don't feel the heat. And when they feel the heat, they retreat. Mm. And then you realize that you're only retreating to more heat. And and I just think that if if you don't learn how to deal with adversity, if, if you don't learn how to deal with, with shortcomings and, and mishaps and mistakes and different things, then you're ultimately not – putting together the proper playbook for success in your life. Yeah. And and that's, to me, the biggest if, – if you ask me what is the biggest downfall of where college athletics is right now with the portal and with – you know, I don't have a problem with 
athletes getting paid. I really don't. What I have a problem with is the culture that that NIL has has began to create for college athletes. And and, and again, I just I think it's a dangerous place to be in. And and it's raising a lot of guys that are in need of of guidance and direction because they don't get it. Yeah, that, that's what's interesting about the article is he says, you know, he talks about the fact that he at any of the places he went, he went to four different schools. You know, he didn't feel like guys were being taken advantage of or if they were transferring, they weren't having an opportunity. You know, he really felt like the opportunity was presented. Like if he transferred there, like you were given an opportunity to compete and players wanted to play for the coach. And and that is one element of it that you say, well, yeah, like, of course, if, if a kid's going to transfer to a place. That school saying there's a need. They obviously want that player there, and they're going to give them every opportunity to showcase they can or they can't. Now, whether it was through lack of you know poor play or, or injuries, you know, for JT Daniels in particular, you know that unfortunately didn't really work out. And and in particular at the end of his career, where the concussions did play a role. But it's funny. I actually um, had binocular disparity. Uh, some of the similar uh, symptoms he was like playing hmm. through and talking about. Uh, I had to play through back in like 2012. How bad and is then it? I had to take a few weeks off, which it, it's a weird thing, man, because it, it I don't know how to describe it. It's almost like it's almost like if if you I, I don't I don't it, it's hard to describe almost like you like everything's kind of blurry. I wish you would have said what you thought in that moment. Yeah, come on, but, man. You know, <laughs> I'll, I'll get it say, off you later. I'll get it off you later. OK, if you've ever been completely, I mean, just inebriated oh yeah like drunk off your like what jonas what do you say is the fail safe anytime the room's starting to spin oh you just close one eye yeah yeah you turn Th- that's into a sen- cyclops that's essentially like what i would probably looking back on it had to have done <laughs> because what happens is your oh, eyes cyclops. aren't like they, they usually are supposed to communicate together to work together to see one picture but when you have this binocular disparity, you're kind of seeing like double vision, <laughs> and, it, and it's like it's blurry, and it's just it's it's hard to. Sometimes your lens can get knocked off. Yeah. And so I, I, I like so when you're when you're inebriated, like I, I think about that for a second, uh, and you're having a hard time. Like I was like, I never knew but, to close one eye. I always was just like I got to keep them both open. I, well, I push Jonas will it. say he'll say close one eye or put one leg on the ground. And that's how it usually can help, or whatever. That's what he he typically says. Dang! It's just like if you're if you're ever out and you're you go to look at your phone. Like sometimes you reach when you reach the point to where you've got to close one eye to read what somebody sent you in a message, or how long the Uber is going to be before it's there, or you get motion sickness while you're reading it. Yeah, just get it. Get a glass of water and call it. it, Text someone that like, hey, this is where I'm at. This is what time it is. What if Uh, you're already with people? You need to tell someone. Hey, Lee, yeah, yeah. be yeah. honest. Last time you you uh, did the one eye open, one one eye closed like at a bar. The past seven days uh, after the Packers lost. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <there> you go. <laughs> hmm. um, anyway, the the point is, is like it, it. It was a weird sensation. Like I can understand what he was dealing with. I had to sit out for a few weeks. I had to do all these like eye exercises where you like training your eyes to work back together and all this stuff. It was weird. Um, but it's it's a scary thing, man. Like you're you, you don't think playing football like you're gonna have an issue like that. You think about concussions, you don't think it's gonna, it's gonna impact your vision and other things that come along with it.